Maybe this will help if I wear them as light gloves. And you can see how sharp this is, look at this. Go straight through it, just a little scratch. That's why I'm gonna need some sort of protection. Each year, two million tourists flock to these lava fields, drawn by the glow of the molten rock. But it's easy to get injured or lost in this barren and dangerous landscape. I'm going to put myself in the position of a tourist stranded here to show you how to survive. A camera crew will follow my journey. I'm about to drop into a dormant crater somewhere on the volcano's upper slopes. Look at this place. It's just so intimidating. This volcano is incredibly dangerous. Only a few feet beneath me is a lake of molten rock whose temperature is over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and seeping out of the ground are noxious volcanic gases. Wow, look at that. It's like I've landed on the surface of, you know, like an alien planet. The landscape is featureless and utterly forbidding. Easy to see why people get lost here. It's just this miles and miles of desolate terrain. I can tell this stuff is gonna be a nightmare to try and cover. If you are lost here, try to work out a route to the sea because it's by the sea that most Hawaiians live. What I do know is that this volcano is on the south side of the island. And the best way of finding civilization is to head to the coast. So that means my nearest bit of coast is going to be to the south. I'm going to use the sun as a compass. It's late afternoon and the sun is in the west, which means that south must be this way. This whole area is getting really hot now. And I keep seeing these little windows uh, dropping down into the lava tooth below. Holes in the surface like this are known as skylights. Beneath them are streams of lava flowing through tunnels called lava tubes. The temperature down there is about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But there is a way of crossing an area like this, and this is how. Very gingerly, test it with your boot, and if your boot melts, it means it's too hot to cross. You boy! I'm gonna go for this now, but the camera crew are gonna wait here. So if we try to do this together, the size might well give in. Here goes. Need a light. My boots started to melt on that. That's too hot there. What you've got to watch out for is if the rock in front of you starts to go uh, mushy. And if that does happen and your foot starts to sink in, you've got to back away and try and find another way around. I've made it through and this rock is, is much cooler now, but my feet are just on fire after that. I'm through the hottest part of the lava field now, but I've got to find food and water. Dehydration is a big danger for stranded tourists on these unforgiving lava fields. The volcano is not a good place to be without something to drink. I know you're supposed to be able to survive three days without it, but to be honest the way I feel at the moment, in this heat, I'm going to struggle to make it through one. As I get further away from the active crater, I'm starting to see more and more plants. The lava fields of Kilauea were once covered with lush rainforest, and some sections still remain. These are called kipukas. They range from tiny outcrops of vegetation to large islands of jungle. But in there is going to be my best chance of finding food and water. One of the difficulties of this whole volcanic region is that there's no streams or rivers or lakes. 
Uh, but my best chance of finding water is going to be in here, in the jungle, either in a hollow uh, or in a cave. Hey, look at this. Look. Avocado. And this is an avocado tree. And this is good news for me. I love avocados. I wanted to see if I can get some of these down. Avocados grow on the higher branches of the trees to protect the fruits from predators. I should be able to use some of these vivi trees to shin up there. Let's get up this last bit. And that is what I'm after. I'm just so hungry. I'm going to eat this up here. I'm not going to wait to get down. <laughs> Try and get. <laughs> and then just get this skin off. Avocados are one of nature's superfoods, full of calories, protein, and good fat. Mm, that's amazing. I just love avocados. If I was ever strand on a desert island, this would be the one of the foods I'd take. And mayonnaise. With a full stomach, it's time to get going again. I've got one for later. But I still haven't found any water. Then, I spot something which could lead me to fresh drinking water. Wow, look at this. It's actually an old lava tube. And at one point, lava would have flowed all the way through this uh, on its journey down to the sea. These trees here, uh, they're called a here trees. And the, what they do, they run over the edge and their roots run exposed straight down uh, to the floor. Uh, and what they're doing is looking for water, straight down looking for uh, moisture. And I should be able to use these to climb down. It's just. There's a lot of moisture down in this cave, uh, but the water itself can be contaminated down here just because uh, animals will often fall into these skylights uh, and then die. And really, I want to be finding water from deeper within the actual lava tubes themselves, where I can be certain that the water's clean. But before I head down any further, I need to make myself a torch. The nuts from the kukui tree are rich in plant oil and burn easily. This is the actual kukui tree itself. And the nuts should be all around here now. And what I need to do is try and get in through this outer hard shell and we'll grab a rock like this and give them a <laughs> whack. And this is what I'm trying to get out of it, the actual nut itself. To make the torch, I'm going to skewer the nuts on sharp sticks. Green wood works best, as it doesn't burn so fast. What I need to do now is thread these through these little sticks and make like a, like a sort of kebab of nuts that are going to slowly burn. And what you do is you light the top ones first and let it burn down uh, that way. OK, that's one. Once upon a time, molten lava would have just been flowing through all of this and you see where it's got so hot it's actually fired uh, the walls and it's gone like you know like glassy ceramic wow look at this these roots you can see them here they're just growing straight through uh, the tunnel ceiling and they're all just laden with moisture there's probably enough here for me to actually fill up my whole water bottle Rainwater has found its way through the cracks in the ceiling of the lava tube and is dripping down the roots. The main thing is, though, this water is filtered and it's clean uh, and good enough probably to bottle and uh, sell in a nice restaurant somewhere. All I need to do is collect it. I just can't wait to try it. Oh, this is filled up. <laughs> and that is so pure. That's proper volcano water. It's time to head back to the surface. Hey, listen, listen, listen. That's bees. I can definitely 
definitely hear bees somewhere. And if I can, if I can just find their hive and get to their honey, that would just be ace. Look at that, you see them, they're just going mad round, round that little tree. That would be a, yeah, this is gonna be certain, certain mass sting if I try and grab this. The best way to calm angry bees is with smoke. Okay, what I wanna do with these is just lay this one on top of that and really roll this in tight. And then roll it. And before I actually light this, I'm also going to need this face mask. I'm using this old t-shirt again. And this is just to stop any of the bees going up my nose, in my mouth, or in my ears. OK. This is ready to light. By wrapping the bundle tightly, I'm limiting the amount of air that can get to the twigs. It will smolder and give off smoke, but won't catch light. Now, first of all, I need to waft this smoke uh, over them and try and calm them down a bit. OK, I think that should do it. Ah, I've got it. Awesome. Mmm. The great thing about honey is that this stuff never goes bad, even when they find it in the pyramids. All they have to do is reheat it, and it's good enough to eat again. And it's just so pure. Thanks, bees. Mm. The honey has given me a real boost to keep pushing on. At this latitude in the tropics, it gets dark really quickly, especially in woods like this. So I'm going to need to find some sort of shelter uh, before it gets night time. One of the most important things when uh, building a shelter is getting a good location. And it looks like there's a bit of a clearing up here. We'll see what this is like. In fact, actually, this wouldn't be a good area. You can see where game trail has obviously come through here. And in fact, this is probably probably a pig. Wild pigs are highly dangerous. They have sharp tusks and will defend their territory ferociously. I've got to look for somewhere else. Hey, look, this is going to be great. And like nature's done the work for me here. There are no poisonous snakes or deadly spiders on this island but there are centipedes, leeches and mosquitoes. I don't want to share my bed with any of them. Before I build the roof, I need to put the bedding down and this dead fern is going to make a really nice springy like mattress. And even though it's a roof that keeps me dry, it's this that keeps me warm and this is where you lose most of your heat. Okay, now I can start to build the structure. These giant ferns will make an ideal covering. And just put the last couple of these in, and this is going to keep this rain off that's just started. And this is one of the rare occasions where the timing of the rain is actually perfect. All I need now is to find some dead firewood. A fire is really important, not just to keep me warm, but to keep the bugs away. The mosquitoes in this jungle are vicious and the smoke from the fire will keep them at bay, at least for a while. Ah, the rain's now put my fire out and it just means now the mosquitoes are just having a field day with me and I'm getting ah, just bitten alive out of here. And this night is just not very pleasant. And if I'm honest, I can't want to go home. If the guys don't rate the OJ... Oh, God, this is just to swallow it.